What's up everybody? Been a while, but I'm back with another video game uh, development journal video. So, you remember I was working on a 3D model to 2D sprite conversion process? Well, I pretty much scrapped all that. Uh, it was a real pain in the butt. Um, relying on Blender uh, to save and import and export in different file formats is really iffy. A lot of third-party and private you know, programmers write the um, the Python scripts to import and export different file formats. So my thing, my uh, pipeline was basically a 3D model, probably from MakeHuman, imported into Blender, exported to FragMotion, exported to a sprite sheet. And that was just not working. The Blender exporter built into Blender for DirectX files, which I needed to use, um, would like quadruple the count of vertices in the model which would very easily get over the limit of what frag motion would open to create sprites and there was one technical headache uh, after another it was a huge uh, nuisance and I decided even though I could have more complex and exciting artwork using that process uh, I decided it just wasn't gonna work and my goal was to keep it small and simple so I could actually produce a game so uh, I ended up going back to a simple sprite format I had, a, had my wife the artist draw me some sprites and um, it was funny, she came out with this little guy, and I was completely blown away, and it made me change the whole direction of uh, how I wanted to make the game, and I was so excited by it that I no longer feel bad that I went through that whole process for essentially nothing useful, uh, because now I'm really excited and, and, and uh, just super psyched to have this different art style and different theme for the game. So uh, that's what I've been doing for the last you know month or two or whatever, was learning Blender and doing all that bullshit, but... Uh, now I'm back to sprites, and if, if everything's going very well, because now I can actually program again and go forward and you know work on the game itself instead of having to figure things out. So, um, what I did very recently, the last few days, was I created classes for animation and animation frames. Before, um, let me put an enemy in here. You remember this guy, right? That just had like these two frames with his legs moving back and forth rather crudely. Uh, that was two separate images that I was just putting one after another to create the illusion of animation. What I have now is actual animation coming from a sprite sheet. So what happens is, um, Candace will draw me some sprites of this little guy walking, and then I'll take them in Photoshop and save each layer as a different image, and then I get something like this, and I save it as a PNG file, or six PNG files, then I use a program called Sprite Sheet Packer and it puts them in a nice grid for me and then it'll come up with a text file that looks like this down one through down six, those are the names of the of the individual PNG images for each frame followed by X, Y, width and height of each uh, sprite so 0, 0, 52, 67, that means the first frame starts at X0, Y0 and it's 52 wide and 67 tall so now my program in its animation class in the constructor for that class will take this data, load the first image, put it all together as an animation. So now I can load an animation with several angles uh, facing up, facing down, and facing to the side. And then I can play them all in sequence, looping over when I get to the last one in the sequence. And this all happens automatically. I don't have to program anything special for animations now. All I have to do is call the constructor, tell it the file name, and it'll load it from that and set it all up beautifully. So that's pretty uh, epic. I don't have to tell it how many frames. I don't have to tell it what the directions are because it does it all in that text file and through naming the files properly for the individual frames. So now I've got actual animation working in my game engine. And I'm very pleased about that. So the, uh, the new direction I wanted to go in is instead of a, a gritty sort of futuristic space shooter, Think Red Dawn, the movie, except with aliens, and in the style of Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. So, uh, what I have envisioned right now is you'll pick the main character, whether you want to be the boy or the girl. You'll name the character, just like in Mass Effect or something. And then, you know, you're at elementary school, and then all these horrible, evil, slobbering, you know, alien monsters come and invade. And you're just this little kid with this goofy little face and you don't know what to do about it, and you're all alone. So, that's basically the premise. And I had some interesting ideas. I had the idea for, like, a robot companion that you would somebody would build for you out of the, uh, the alien technology and stuff. So it would be kind of like in uh, Zelda Spirit Tracks for the DS, where you have, like, the Phantom that plays with you through the game, or think Half-Life 
two with Alex, kind of like that. So you like have your own little gun, but you're not the big powerful, you know, bad guy or good guy on your own. You kind of work with the robot, and so there's like a team mechanic that happens. So anyway, I have some ideas that I'm really excited about to make it fresh and interesting as a game, and make it cute and funny. So I'm really excited about the direction that the game will uh, will go in, and I'm excited about Candace's art too because. I mean, I just have these frames so far, but I think this looks so awesome when a little guy walks around. I mean, I think I want to have a really cool, colorful, exciting game world. So the next thing I have to do is I want to make... Um, I need to figure out... I think I have the optimum resolution figured out of how I want to set the game up and have all my art assets sized. What I need to do, though, is make sure I can resize that uh, Windows resolution and possibly go full screen. So next I'm going to tinker with that and make sure I can accommodate different monitors and things like that because I want to get that in place before I tell Candace to draw all this art and then to find out I can't use it because it's the wrong size or looks shitty or whatever. So that's the next step and then I'm just going to keep on going with uh, my next goal or big goal for Milestone is to um, have a prototype of the game playable on a single screen, make sure it's fun, tweak everything. Then it's just a matter of expanding from there. So. Um, I'm going to post a link beneath this video. Make sure you're, if you're on Twitter and you want to follow me and be in touch, then you're more than welcome. I'm at RetroThomas on Twitter. And I just set up a page on Facebook, too. I want to call my, my company when I release games. It will be called New Retro Games. So I made a fan page for that. So you can go ahead and like it if you're on Facebook, and I'll post updates there, too, so you can keep in touch and keep up to date on everything I'm doing and comment on it and all that good stuff. So you can be in the loop. So thanks for watching. Uh, I think I'll be back much sooner next time with another video to keep you updated now that I'm actually producing and doing interesting things instead of trying to figure out technical, you know, 3D nonsense. So there's a lesson for you if you're making your own game. Stay small and stay simple and don't rely on a pipeline that you can't count on because it's only going to make you frustrated. So thanks for watching. See you soon.